But I think out of the box in Mastercam, uh, certainly there are more features that are controlled in Lathe using the Machine Definition Manager. So I'll go ahead and open up uh, the Machine Definition Manager in Mastercam. Uh, starting with X8, it does take a second to load. So there we go. Now it's popped up. And with Mastercam uh, Lathe specifically, we make use of this section in here called Machine Configuration. So as I scroll down here, we have what is referred to as a kinematic tree. And that kinematic tree is used to specify which axes move together. So I'm going to go in this little tree here, and I'm going to collapse the main uh, category here for each of these groups. And what you can see is that we've got a machine base, and then we have a left spindle group and a right spindle group, because this machine happens to have dual spindles. And in order for us to be able to machine both with uh, different turrets and with different spindles, we need to end up creating what is called an axis combination. So first we build uh, this kinematic tree. And if I look at the left spindle group, for example, you can see that the left spindle group has a lathe left spindle C-axis component. This means that we can address this left spindle as a programmable axis. And then you'll notice that we have a lathe chuck. So that makes up that left spindle group. And when we build these uh, sets of axis components, we need to eventually come to a point where we have two sets or two groups that work together. One group that holds a tool to cut the material and another uh, group that actually holds the workpiece. So in this case, this lathe chuck is a component that is capable of holding a workpiece. So in other words, we're going to load some material in there and then we're going to cut it with one of our tool groups. So we have a left spindle group, and we also have a right spindle group. And the difference between the way these two are constructed, you'll see that on the right spindle group, we actually start with a z-axis. Now this is a z-axis component, which means that the carried components, which in this case are the spindle z-axis and the lathe chuck, these two are mounted on this z-axis. So when this z-axis moves, these other components that are children of that main component will be carried with them. Now, this z-axis just describes uh, the main axis, the main linear axis on which that motion will occur. That doesn't necessarily mean that that will be named the z-axis for output. So, for example, on a lot of machines, this would be a w-axis, which would be uh, an axis that's collinear with C, but it's actually programmed with a different word address. So it would be programmed with a w-axis instead. So you'll notice that in the component list, you're not going to see like a w-axis. You're only going to see um, the standard x, y, z, and then a, b, c for the rotaries. The actual output of uh, you know, the address letter here would be controlled inside the post processor. So we do have, again, the ability to describe to Mastercam the sets of components that are being used together. So these two groups just control the spindle, and that would be where we're going to load our workpiece. Then we have our tool groups. So we have this upper left tool group, and what you'll see is that this turret actually has a z-axis component, an x-axis component, and optionally a y-axis. So if this machine does have a y-axis, we would want to load a y-axis component on top of the z and the x. And then finally we've got 
a lathe upper turret. For the new Mastercam mill turn product, they're actually using uh, the kinematic tree in here and loading components to all of this to build a, a machine simulation. For normal Mastercam lathe, not the mill turn side, just the regular Mastercam lathe, typically we don't go, need to go in here and create um, the ability to do the simulation in the same way that you must do that with the mill turn product in order to have that work. So we've got our upper left tools group. Then we've got our lower left tools group. So this machine has both an upper turret and a lower turret. And on the lower turret, you notice we've got a Z, we've got an X. Maybe we've got a Y, maybe we don't. Maybe the lower turret is, is Z and X only. And in that case, we would actually remove that Y axis. So the idea here is that you want to build each of these groups as they are driven on the machine. Then we have our upper right tools group. So this is the same turret, it's the same upper turret, but here we're setting it up so that we can have tools that are mounted on the right side and we can drive it against the right spindle. So lathe right spindle Z axis, lathe upper turret X, lathe upper turret Y. Now there are some features or some properties that are set inside here. So if I go to my left spindle group, for example, and I double click on my lathe chuck, this would be where we would set the minimum and maximum spindle speeds for these chucks here. Now, this is going to control the maximum speed that you can enter in the Mastercam interface. It doesn't necessarily set the maximum lathe spindle speed for your chuck inside the post. It depends on whether or not that post has been set up to read this value or not. So we can set things like minimum and maximum spindle speed. After we build out all of the various um, kinematic groups that work together, so again, we've got left spindle group, right spindle group. We have left and right upper tools, so upper left and upper right. And then we have the lower, so we've got lower left tools group and lower right tools group. And again, these determine which sets of components work together. Now we can certainly go through and build an entire lathe machine definition, but I recommend you don't do that. If you go and select uh, File Open in the Machine Definition Manager, I'm going to scroll in Shared MCAM X8 CNC Machines, so we're in the CNC Machines folder, and we have a set of machine definitions. You'll see that there's the lathe multi-axis mill, so this is lathe multi-axis mill turn advanced 2-2. Two -two. There's, so there's 2-2 two -two mm, 2-2. Two -two. There's 2-4 two bmm, 2-4 b, and 2-4 two mm, and then 2-4. So what these different descriptions tell you is whether or not it is a dual spindle and has uh, four sets of tool groups or two sets of tool groups. So if we look at the lathe, mil, so lathe multi-axis, mill turn, advanced, 2-2. Two -two. I'm going to grab that one first. This one has a left spindle group and a right spindle group. So that's the first two. You'll notice it says 2-2, two -two, so it's a two spindle. But then it has an upper left tools group and a lower right tools group. So in this case, this particular machine definition is only set up with an upper turret that works on the left spindle and a lower turret that works on the right spindle. Okay. If I go in and do another open, and, and for each of these machine definitions, 
we have both an English version and a metric version. So you'll see this MM after the name of the file. So 2-4 and then 2-4B, the difference here is that this machine definition with the B is set up as a five axis machine because it's got an extra B axis that's mounted on that upper turret. So this would be like your Akuma Multis or Mazak Integrex style multi-axis machine definition. Now you do need a post that is capable of driving a five-axis uh, lathe, and I don't believe there are any that come in Mastercam out of the box that do that by default. There are plenty of uh, post processors that do support four-axis turning. So that would be XYZ with a C axis. So I would recommend if you're setting up a four axis mill, so it doesn't matter if it has um, you know, left and right spindle, upper, lower turret, you're still only ever driving four uh, axes simultaneously. If you're going to do that, if you're going to set up one of those machines, I recommend you just start with the lathe, multi-axis, mill turn, advanced, 2-4. So I'm going to select that machine definition. And again, this one has the left and the right spindle group. And it has an upper left and a lower left, and an upper right and a lower right. Now maybe your particular machine can't drive the lower turret against the right spindle, right? Maybe it only works with uh, the lower left. That's okay. You can actually delete one of these uh, or more of these groups if they're not needed for your machine. After we go through and configure or set up these different tool groups, this tells us what components are loaded on the machine. The next step we need to do is tell Mastercam how they interact get together. And so after we create this machine configuration, we need to go up in the dialog box, and there's this little button that looks like uh, a gnomon. It looks like an axis marker. So we're going to click on that button. And that button here brings up the machine axis combinations. An axis combination tells the Mastercam system while you're programming what components are working together and it also tells the post processor what components were used to program a given toolpath. So in this dialog we've got an, a left upper axis combination and when I select that one here in the list, left upper, you can actually see that the left spindle group is selected, so we have a lathe left spindle C axis and a lathe chuck. In the axis combination list here, it will list the linear and rotary axes that work together, so this has got C, Z, X, and Y, and then it lists the two components that are the tool holding component and the work holding component. So in this case, it would be our lathe chuck, would be our work holding component, and the lathe upper turret would be our tool holding component. If we look at the left lower axis combination, you can see that we've got the left spindle selected here. So left spindle C axis, lathe chuck, and then as we go down the list, you'll see that the lower left tools group is selected. And here we've got the z-axis, the x-axis, the y, and the lower turret. Well, let's say, for example, that both the left lower and the right lower did not have a y-axis. We can take the left lower, and we'll go to the left lower left tools group. So lower left tools group. And I'm just going to disable the y-axis. And you'll notice that in my left lower axis combination, 
that axis combination no longer has that y-axis included. I'll take the right lower axis combination. We've got our right spindle. And you can see here's my lower left tools group. Well, that's not, that's not going to work for us because that's, again, the lower left tools group. I wouldn't want that. I would want the lower right tools group because this is the right lower axis combination. Now, what we have to be careful with here, in my right spindle group, it says right lower, I've got a z-axis included. And that z-axis is the positioning axis for the position of my spindle. If I look down at my lower right tools group, my lathe right spindle z-axis is disabled because I've already got a z-axis included. I want to disable my lathe right spindle z-axis, and I want to enable my lathe right spindle z-axis for my lower right tools group. I'm going to make sure the y-axis is disabled, and I'm going to add the lathe lower turret. So what we're doing here with this axis combination is we're telling Mastercam in two different places which set of linear and rotary axes we are driving and which set of components we're using to hold uh, both the material and the tool itself. So I'll make those changes to my machine axis combinations and then I'm going to save my machine definition. I'll select OK, and because we've gone through the Machine Definition Manager to make these changes, and I'm making them to the active machine definition that I had loaded, we're now asked if we want to replace the existing machine group with the one we just modified. And I'll say yes, I want to do that replacement. Now, as I'm programming in Mastercam, now in this case, I've got some lathe ops that are done on the left spindle first. So I'm coming in to do my lathe roughing, then I've got my lathe face, then I've got my lathe finish. So let's do this. I'm going to turn on all these operations and then I'll click on only display selected toolpaths. So right now, my lathe rough here roughs from the top. My lathe face roughs from the top, and then I've got my finish going. Well, let's say that I wanted to rough from the top, and then I wanted to face with my lower left turret, because I've got a different tool that I want to use for facing, and then on the top turret again, I want to do the finishing. For my lay of roughing command, if I go to my toolpath parameters, one of the things you'll see down in the lower left-hand corner is the axis combination that I've got selected. So picking an axis combination adds a little bit of a wrinkle because even though you're picking the correct axis combination, you still have to go through the process of properly defining your tool. So for example, we've got our lathe rough. It uses the left upper axis combination, and there's my tool definition. If I go look at my lathe facing operation, it's using this T2121. I need to make sure that's not used somewhere else. So what I'm going to do, I'll select a new library tool. I'm going to grab this tool, 2222. And first thing I'm going to do is pull the tool in, then I'm going to go select my axis combination. Now, if I just go select my axis combo and I choose the lower, the problem is my geometry is chained on the upper chain up here. So I've got to fix that before I just go switching my axis combo or it's going to screw everything up. So I'm going to pull up my levels manager. And I'm going to take my solid, 
let's do this. We're going to use a new level. Let's use level 30. So I'm going to create a new level called bottom spin profile. Okay, and now we're going to do create turn profile. It says select solid bodies, faces or surfaces, so I've got my solid body, and we're going to do just a lower profile. Now one of the things that I need to do, make sure I'm in the correct plane before I do that. So let's reset this. I'm going to go to my WCS manager, make sure we're in the top plane. That should help quite a bit. And let's try that again. Turn profile. We want the lower profile. Okay, now we've got that lower profile created. So in order for us to drive geometry with our lower turret with a lathe, we have to make sure that that geometry is on the correct side of the z-axis center line. So I'm going to go, you know, planes, lathe diameter, we're going to do uh, plus D plus Z, which means that this quadrant right here is positive. Sometimes it helps, I think, to go in and turn off uh, the WCS axis marker. There we go. Because you notice here, our uh, display shows we're in Z plus D. So in this case, we're going to be in minus diameter coordinates. So this should be X negative. Up here is X positive. So now what I want to do, and technically because it's a facing operation and there's no actual geometry, I didn't have to create this lower geometry. But if I want to do any of my other cuts using my lower turret, I need to make sure that I have geometry down there in order to be able to drive it. So here for my lathe face, I'm going to do axis combination, and we're going to choose left lower. By the way, if I right click on the axis combo, there's an option to show the components. So it shows you the left lower programmable axes, C, Z, and X. Part holding components, the lathe chuck. And tool holding component is the lathe lower turret. Oop, and I want to make sure I'm on left lower. So now I've got left lower selected. I'm going to take this tool. And it's important that I use a tool that is not set up or not used in any other operation. Because if this tool is already used in the upper turret, it's really going to screw things up if I then try to say, oh, it's also used in the lower turret as well. So here I've got a brand new tool. I'm going to right click and choose Edit Tool. And the first thing that I'll generally do is go in and choose Set Up Tool. So Set Up Tool, it's on the bottom turret, it's on the left spindle, and now we can choose whether our spindle rotation you know, is counterclockwise or clockwise. And depending on whether I'm counterclockwise or clockwise, that's going to affect the mounting position of my tool depending on the handedness of the tool. So for example, if my tool is facing up and I choose counterclockwise for my spindle rotation, it shows the tool uh, picture with my um, tool facing up. The problem here is that if my tool is facing up and I'm turning counterclockwise, I've got a right-handed tool and I need a left-handed tool. So in that case, I leave my settings here and I select OK. Then I have to go over to the holders and I have to change the handedness of my holder. So every holder has a left and a right-hand definition. I go back in to do Setup Tool and now you can see that I'm counterclockwise my tool is facing up and left, and it's on the left spindle. And then you say to me, okay, great. Well, really, it's the tool is facing down. Okay, well, if I change my 
spindle rotation, clockwise versus counterclockwise, that's insert down, that looks right. I want to go clockwise, I want to go insert down, but I have to go and change the handedness of my holder in order to get it to be proper. So there's this whole interplay between the settings for your lathe tool setup, the settings for your holder, and the axis combination. Now, the very last thing that I always do when I'm setting up this new tool, bottom turret, vertical tool, clockwise in the left hand, I make sure that I do draw tool. Because draw tool will show the tool as it's mounted in the turret. And you just want to make sure that that orientation is correct. I've now got that tool set up correctly. I give it my face parameters and say OK and then I'm going to regenerate that operation. And sometimes you'll get this. So what I'm going to do is grab all of these different operations down here and lock them. And we're going to take just this lathe face operation. And one of the things that can happen, here's my tool. I'm going to use my home position values here. The home position is where the tool starts and stops at. And right now, it's coming from X positive. So it's coming from way up here. What I'm going to do is say user defined. I'm going to do define, and we're going to do minus 5 and X. And we're going to do 1 in Z. So we've got that selected. All the rest of this should be OK. And a lot of the times you'll get this when you are trying to take existing operations and update them using a new setup. So a lot of the times I will have to just start over and say, you know what, if I want to program using multiple axis combinations, multiple turrets, you need to start out and do it that way right from the get-go. Because a lot of times it's just going to give you all kinds of grief if you take an existing operation programmed from you know, the top turret and you try to switch it over to the bottom. So let's do it over again. I'm going to do RAM Saver. just to clean everything out. And the one thing that I've got is I had a pickoff cutoff operation in there, and it transferred my stock over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to make sure that I go in my stock setup, take my right spindle stock, and delete it. There. So now we've started over. We've got our part geometry on the left-hand side. We've roughed it with the upper turret. Now we want to face it. So tool paths, face, we're going to grab the left lower turret. I'm going to grab tool 2222. We're going to do edit tool. It's on the left spindle. It's on the bottom turret. It's a vertical tool. We do a draw tool so that we can see the orientation. That looks good that left lower. Oh, and home position, minus 5, 10. We go minus 5, 1, maybe 2. And again, this is the position relative to the origin where the tool change is going to occur and where it's going to retract to. And if you look at these face parameters, here's where it shows use stock, finish Z. So we're just going to go select points. Select first boundary point. My first boundary point is going to be eh, maybe right around there. And my second boundary point is going to be basically the center of that arc. And if I program it correctly from get-go, I'm going to go into back plot here.
we'll step forward. So here you can see that we've got our tool. Insert is down, and it was in the upper turret. And you notice where this origin point is. Let's uh, let's fix that. So for our face, we're going to do user defined, and I'm going to do select. We're going to say that that's down there. Huh. When you reverse the axis combo, it looks like these values reverse a little bit. So let's go uh, 4 there. Let's go 2 there. So that's one of those other funky things. Because I've got my lower axis combo, you notice that my X position for the home position is backwards from the upper turret. So here it shows me coming from my home position, and I may need to adjust that home position for my upper. Oop. Then it shows me switching over to my lower turret. Here's the home position for my lower turret. Now I'm bringing the tool in and doing the face, and then coming back to the home position there. Okay. So I use axis combinations to tell it which turret and which spindle I'm driving. And for example, I'm going to pull up the same file, uh, but with the pickoff cutoff already done. So here we've done all of the work on the left spindle. We've done a pickoff cutoff operation, which does the pickoff and cutoff over here and transfers the geometry and the stock over to the right spindle. So now I've got work that I've done on the left spindle. Now I want to finish this part on the right side. So that's where I would then go in and choose, you know, we're going to go plane manager. Got that all set up. OK. So our tool and construction planes are G55 sub which is now over here. We've transferred the uh, work offset location. And now maybe we want to use our lower turret to do a facing operation over here. Toolpath space. And again, I've got operations on the left side that use these two tools. I need a completely different tool. Even if it has the same number, it's got a different setup. So what I'm going to do I'm going to go select a library tool, use this guy. I'm going to select the axis combo, which is going to be right lower. And then I'll do edit tool. So setup tool, it is the bottom turret. It is the right spindle. And cutting counterclockwise, our insert is down. If we wanted to count cut clockwise, you notice that flips the insert up, and to cut on the right side, we would need to choose a different handed holder. So that's good there. Draw tool. Draws the tool, shows us how it's set up. That is correct for facing the right spindle. We've still got the right lower axis combination. And now I'm going to select a home position. To tell it my own position somewhere down there. So it looks like it's about 3.5 and X and about minus 3.5 in Z. And again, this is relative to the current uh, coordinate system that's active. And ooh. Need to change the Z value here. Okay, so that's specifying the finish point in Z because the origin is actually the front face of this part right here. Okay, and if we back plot that, there's our tool. It's coming in from the bottom does our facing, and returns back to that origin. 
and you can see that it actually updated the stock as well. Okay, so that's the basics of using um, the axis combinations that are set up in the machine definition to control which spindle you're cutting on and which turret you're using to cut on that spindle. When it comes to doing additional setup for the lathe, the output is really not set up in the machine definition manager. So let's talk about what I mean. And this is, we're going to, basically, we're almost done with the presentation for today. I'm going to kind of end with this. If I go into my shared MCAM X8 and then go to my lathe folder and go look at posts, all of those lathe multi-axis mill turn advanced 2-2, uh, 2-4, 2-4B, all of those use the generic FANUC 4XMT underscore lathe post. So this post processor is set up to be driven from multiple machine definitions. I'm going to open up that post processor. And we'll slide it over here. So this is that generic FANUC 4X MT lathe post. And of course there are variable switches at the very top that you can use to do some configuration. But when we're talking about a machine that's got a left spindle, a right spindle, a left upper, a right upper, a left lower, and a right lower axis combination, there are a whole bunch of different axes that could be being driven together at the same time. And this particular post uses a function called scase. So if I search for scase, there is a section in this post starting after the lathe specific spindle switches. The first section allows you to set up lathe cam turning. And the way that you can think of this, this string down here contains a series of digits. And each digit in this string controls something different. So if you look at all the strings, there's basically the, at each of these positions, A through J, so A would be the first position, B would be the second, C would be the third, J would be the last. If you correspond them to these numbers, it will tell you what that digit controls. So this is the setup for canned uh, turning. And what it does is it says, okay, for pattern roughing, do we want to have the cutter compensation lead-in addition, which is going to be dependent on B. And so B is going to be cutter comp before or after the cycle. Basically, do we instate cutter comp before we activate the cycle or after we activate the cycle? And then this is turn comp on in profile, basically yes or no. Then we have the finish compensation settings, face turn rough and finish settings. So this is all for pattern repeat, and this is all for face and turning can cycles, and it all sets up how we control the cutter comp. Typically what we're going to do here, pattern and face turn inside can profile, so this allows the comp inside the CAN cycle. That would be the string that we want to run. If we had to activate compensation outside of the CAN profile, this is set up so that we can uncomment this lower line and add the comment to the upper line. And we have just totally switched the behavior for our CAN profile settings, whether it's inside or outside the CAN profile that we turn on cutter comp. The same kind of scheme is used to control the machining position, turret, and spindle settings. 
each of these strings has something like 17 different digits. And each one of these strings allows you to control the behavior for different toolpath types when you're using different turret and spindle combinations. So, the first thing we have is use only TL switch. So it says use only the top left spindle settings below for all Mastercam turret spindle selections when configuring for multi-spindle multi-turret set to zero. So right now this set of columns is the only one that's red. So all of these options here affect top left, bottom left, bottom right, you know, top right, all of the different options are only red right now from this column. If I set this to zero, this column now only applies to the top turret left spindle. This column here now applies to the bottom turret left spindle. This one's top right, so top turret, right spindle, and this one's bottom right, bottom turret, right spindle. Each of these allows you to control things like the C-axis options. Is the axis allowed to wind up? Is it signed direction? Is it an indexer only? Or does it rotate using the shortest direction? For the spindle direction, is it normal or reversed? So let's say, for example, that you were doing, you had a normal spindle direction for the top left. So here's a turning cut, top turret left spindle. But let's say if you were cutting using the bottom turret left spindle, here's turning cut for the bottom turret left spindle, that the spindle direction was reversed. So maybe we want to go and take column B for the turning cut for the bottom turret left spindle, and we want to switch that from 0 to 1. So I just made a configuration change for how the bottom turret left spindle reacts to a turning cut. And you can see that we can do this for turning cut, for right face cutting, for left face cutting, for cross cutting, for Y axis, for multi-surface rotary. So we have all kinds of control and options that's available for configuring the output of your lathe based on the strings, based on the settings for each individual string, for the type of cut, and for the particular turret spindle combination. You know, this is one of those things that I cover pretty, uh, pretty in-depth in, in my lathe post class. So just a, a quick plug for that. Uh, that's going to basically wrap up our presentation today um, for using machine definition and axis combinations in Mastercam. And then we talked just briefly about using the settings inside the post processor to control uh, the turret and spindle settings and uh, you know, a little bit about cutter compensation. So let's go ahead and open up uh, the discussion for questions. Okay, everybody. So as Colin mentioned, we do have a lathe post-processing course beginning. It's running uh, this Saturday and next Saturday. That's two eight-hour days post-processor training with Colin. So if you're interested in that, please do give us a shout. And, and now is your chance to ask questions while we're here. We're going to have to finish right on time today because uh, Colin and I both have something to do uh, at the end of this. So let's see if we can get it going. Uh, go ahead and ask your questions now. So first up, I have a question from Dave. Uh, for, an, for an Okuma uh, multitasking turn, multitasking machine with a, with a B axis on the upper turn, is there a generic pace, sorry, a generic post in which I can consider to edit for this machine or do I need to consider purchasing one? If purchasing one, from who would you recommend? Yes, unfortunately, when you add that B axis, that's where CNC software makes the distinction between freely available posts and purchased posts. 
So you will need to purchase one. Um, there are several different post vendors that we could recommend, uh, and we actually work with those post vendors as well. So is this uh, uh, an Akuma Multis by any chance? And, and if it is a Multis or a Mac turn, uh, maybe we should take that offline because I do have some uh, some recommendations, but I don't want to get you know any of the other vendors uh, upset with us. So um, you know, I'll be happy to give you some recommendations on a on a good post vendor to go through. Okay, and I think uh, that that was a Mac turn. Uh, yeah. So go ahead, follow up, Dave. If I'm asking, if I'm saying that correctly. Mm -hmm. And uh, feel free to send an email to Colin at eApprentice.net or Derek at eApprentice.net, and we can uh, get you set up with that. Okay, very good. So just a comment coming in from Jeffrey. Looks like uh, thanks for the webinar. Very informative. Uh, okay, guys, your chance for, chance for questions. And I don't have very many questions in front of me right now. That means either you got everything Colin said, or it went poof right over your head. So <laughs> go ahead, speak up, everybody. Now's your chance. Yeah, I will add one more comment um, regarding that Mac turn. Uh, the biggest thing about addressing a machine like that is not just the post and the programming; it's really about the simulation, um, and that's where the new Milturn product for Mastercam is going to be a great thing. Uh, one of the only drawbacks that I see with it right now is they don't have very many machines and posts available currently. So if you've got a Mazak Integrex or if you've got an Akuma Multis, uh, they do have some that are available. I think they just added like one of the Doosons. But, you know, for something like the Mac turn, I don't know what their development timeline is like. So, you know, you may be waiting a year or two for them to get, you know, the mill turn solution all created and dialed in. Whereas you can go to a post vendor and you can get a post today that will drive the machine. It just doesn't have, you know, the benefit of machine simulation like the mill turn solution does. Um, and, and, you know, if you're driving one of these really complex, you know, seven hundred and fifty thousand million dollar type machines, it's probably not a bad idea to consider Vericut at that point anyway, since you know, I I would much rather <laughs> crash a machine like that virtually and fix the problem, you know, before it ever occurred. You know, especially, you know, considering the downtime on a machine like that can be a killer. Uh, at that point it really does make sense to invest in in a solution to allow you to simulate um, all of the different code that you're going to be running, you know, on those complex machines. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I've got a question coming in from uh, Matt. I'm going to go ahead and unmute Matt, and let's see uh, if he's on the other line there. Hey, Matt, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, Matt, what's um, your question? Okay, well, we got three T-bed lays that are um, where we cross center line quite a bit. We'll cut the OD on one side, and then with the same tool we go across, cut the ID on the other side of center line. And we got to get, make sure our G2, G3s and our spindle rotation and all that work. Um, of course, stock recognition goes away when we do that. We've tried a couple different things. Currently, the guy is using um, the same machine and control depth in two different posts uh, with two different sets of tools uh, aligned to it. But then even then, it'll sometimes kick out the wrong um, rotation or I'll kick out the wrong uh, G2, G3s. Mm -hmm. Is there a better way of doing that? I've been, I kind of looked at the axis combos trying to maybe set up two different turrets with two different tool packages. So that's, what would you guys recommend? That's exactly what I would recommend. Um, one post with two different sets of the tool packages. That's that's the problem, is that you're basically going to have to lie to it because you're going to say, hey, I've got tool 0101 and it's working on the top. Now I've got that same tool and it's working on the bottom axis combo. So we may have to come up with something like uh, a different numbering scheme, you know, or maybe the post looks at and says, oh, if you've got tool, you know, 100, 100, that's really 1010 or something like that. Uh, but 
you should be able to do it using um, one post processor and simply take advantage of the different axis combinations. And so even though you're using the same turret, same spindle, we would set it up so that one axis combo is top turret left spindle and then one is bottom turret left spindle and that's what allows you to control all of the, you know, the G18, G19s, the arcs, the compensation, the spindle direction, all that stuff. So that's, I mean, that's the way that I would recommend setting it up. Is, is I, well, I, okay, yeah, because our post doesn't have this section in it mm -hmm. that I've seen. It's, yep. These, these are new additions, so you've got to look at generic Fanuc 4X MT underscore lathe, and I want to say X4 or X5 is when they did the rewrite for this. So okay. if you're using, like, I think MPL fan got some of the same updates, the newer version of MPL fan, but if you're using, like, an older version of MPL fan, it won't have any of this stuff, uh, especially the cutter comp. I know, for example, that there was a bunch of work that was done on cutter comp for X5. So these canned lathe can turning settings aren't available in any pre-X5 post. Oh, okay. Let me get that out of the way. So, but yeah, so you're going to have to look at, you know, using a, a newer post making the additions that you need for, you know, for your particular machines, and then leveraging this axis combination to, you know, to allow you to, to do this switching on the fly. Because then all you should have to worry about is grabbing, you know, the correct tool and the correct axis combo, and all of the other output issues would be taken care of in the post. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're quite welcome. That's a great question. Good Thanks question, for asking. Matt. Okay, let's see. Another question coming in from Paul. How are syncing codes handled between turrets? Hmm. By default, there's nothing really in MasterCam in the regular lathe to handle syncing codes. So when you start getting into the new MasterCam mill turn product, there is an intermediate step. So right now, when we go through here and create these operations, we create these operations and we do a post-processing and that's it. In MasterCam Mill Turn, there is a new MasterCam Extensions product. So we would basically bring all these operations and export them to the MasterCam Extensions, which is a simulation environment that allows you to also set uh, weight codes and sync codes and, and link those operations together. So unfortunately, in order to really handle that well, you do have to get uh, MasterCam's new mill turn product. The thing I have a hard time with recommending that product is the limited availability of machines and post processors, and the fact that you really aren't going to be able to do the kind of post processor modifications that you're currently allowed to do with all MasterCam products. They're really going to lock down uh, the posting. They've got a new posting language called MP.NET and a new development environment that is not nearly as accessible to the average user as the current MasterCam post processors. So that's, I mean, the reality is we can kind of do some work inside a post currently using miscellaneous values and miscellaneous real numbers to set and control sync codes and weight codes, but it's really not to the level that the new MasterCam mill turn product is up to. So the MasterCam mill turn product has got that stuff covered, but again, it's it's the availability of machines and post processors, I think, right now that is that is hampering, you know, people moving on to that product. Right, fair enough. Well, okay, guys. Well, uh, that was it. Uh, not many questions today, but um, actually that helped us finish up on time. So thank you, everybody. We do appreciate you spending this time here with us. We know it's an investment on your part in uh, joining us for these lunch hour sessions or lunch hours for those on the West Coast. So thank you, Colin. Excellent presentation.
Uh, we do appreciate it, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.